who are our collaborators, we've worked for, for many years who made this film, and I want them to stand up. The cinematographers, Tony Hardman and Craig Atkinson. <laughs> And I'm going to answer this question now. Sorry, but we love you guys and thank you for going on this journey with us. Um, we met, you know what? We came to Detroit looking for solutions. The, the, the former title of this film used to be called Detroit Hells is Harder. Um, we, we changed the title. We thought this was more, more, more suited to the film that we actually made. Um, but it's not like there's not good ideas there. It's just have they been implemented. For example, you hear a lot about urban farming. Uh, the idea that Detroit could become the largest food producing city in the United States and feed itself. When we first started the movie, that was a tenable idea. A man named John Hans said he was going to buy 40 square miles. He was a very wealthy man. And he was going to make a farm. Well, it, 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 there's been some trees planted, but it was it stalled. It didn't happen. It might happen. Uh, there might be lead in the soil. We don't know. There's a lot of things like, that's a good idea. And um, we kind of nod to it here, but it hasn't taken root yet. Okay, um, there's, there's the, the shrinking of the city plan that the mayors, as you see in the film, trying to implement. We're waiting around a long time waiting for an answer to that story. It's stalled. Um, we'll see, maybe by August there'll be another announcement. So I think that would help the city. Um, you know, I, for us, you know, the, the, the solutions for us lie in the optimism line, the people that we found in Detroit that are sticking with Detroit because most everybody who's there, who's there right now has chosen to stay. Since the housing crisis, they actually could have left to the suburbs because the, the you know the, the prices became affordable in the suburbs. So these people, uh, if I find something worth saving in Detroit, and we agree. Um, we think that um, you know entrepreneurs can help save Detroit City. Uh, right now, there's a two percent extra tax to live in Detroit versus the suburbs. There needs to be some changes to bring businesses to the city, really, and to to lure businesses to come and to stay. So I think entrepreneurship is, is a possible solution for Detroit. Um, I think you know the arrival of some of these young people will help the city. Will they save it? Some artists might not save it, but I think they'll help it. Um, until Detroit fixes its school system, no one with children will come to Detroit because they've, sh they've shut 140 schools in the last two years. So you know I think that those those are some in system you know systemic problems that other cities are facing as well. So it's not we really collective action on a few uh, areas needs to happen in order to save places like Detroit and cities and cities like it. Sorry for the long answer. Thank you, Detroiter, fellow Detroiter. Um, you know you make choices in films. Uh, we sh filmed all over the city. I do. The question is why wasn't Midtown represented? I feel Midtown is represented because um, you know our, the, the the Opera House the cafe, a lot of the things that happen are right in that downtown area where the skyscrapers are, which would be the midtown area. Um, you know, we don't identify neighborhoods as such. Uh, we thought about doing that. We thought maybe it was too much inside baseball. And we tried to show the beauty of the downtown area. Uh, we tried to show the beauty of some of the buildings that have been, that have been left behind that maybe should be uh, brought back. So we really, really tried our best to, you know, go around these 140 square miles and give a viewer outside of Detroit, a feeling of what it's like to be there. And of course you make choices along the way. We think that, we, we really tried with the Opera House as well to show that there's still money in the city, there's wealth in the city, there's people that um, you know come from the suburbs and are investing in, in the city in some kind of way and how they're also suffering. So you know, it, it's when you do a whole film about an entire place, you have to make these choices, but we, we, we did our best. It was fantastic. Thank you. Heidi's from the area, and her parents are from Detroit, and I'm not. And our producer, and our composer, and our sound recordist. So it was about 50% of the crew. And the other question was um, why we didn't touch on white flight, if you think it's relevant. Of course it's relevant. I mean, um, it's a city that's 99% black. 
and um, you know, uh, there's only 700,000 people left, and very few of them are white. About a million white people left and never came back. And I think that uh, I think Detroit uh, really represents one of the bigger problems we have in this country at large, which is race issues that have not been resolved. And I think it's right under the surface of everything. Um, we didn't, we didn't you know, get into it, but we feel like it's implied by the makeup of our characters and the struggles we're having. Um, and I, I, mean, I think it's extremely relevant. I think it's something that, along with education and the jobs, I think it's something that needs to be resolved in this country. It's totally unresolved and it's problematic. And actually, in Detroit, if you you know uh, if you look into it, we need like an eight part series to tell all these stories. But um, instead, of just Downton Abbey. Um, but we love we love our own series on Detroit. It deserves it. But you know, it's interesting if you look into Detroit. Even the way the highways were built bisected uh, races, uh, and so it's still hard to get to certain neighborhoods without hopping on the highway and hopping off. And so even the uh, geographical structure of Detroit was meant to segregate. Which, uh, which is astounding. And a lot, if you look into it, a lot of it goes back to the people who initially built the highways and, and their perspectives on race, etc. So, you know, you go down that rabbit hole and you've got to tell the whole story because race is a big factor in Detroit, of course. Sir? Yes, I, I, I've lived in a close suburb of Detroit all my life and it was a, the Ford and all the automotive industry would not allow mass transportation. They wanted everyone to own their yeah. own car. Right, yeah, of course. So people just spread when they right. had a car. That's kind of he just happened. mentioned that um, the, the auto industry wanted everyone to have their own car, so it was built to be spread out and, you know, without mass transit. And, and single family homes everywhere. I mean, that's the irony of Detroit is that it, it invented and produced the American dream as we've defined it for the last 50 years, and it was not sustainable. So now we need to change with that dream. And most Detroiters don't even have cars, and they've been promising this. Um, you haven't asked your question yet. Sorry. Um, they, they, you know, they've been promising this this up Woodward Avenue, this you know fast train, uh, and now it's been reduced to a really fast bus, um, which doesn't sound that safe. But they're like, okay, they'll go real fast, and then. So you know, it's still unresolved, and you know, the Department of Transportation has been in Detroit lately. Uh, a lot of federal visitors, a lot of federal visitors, to try to help some of these uh, these. The buses uh, can offer a very fast solution, where the trains are going to cost billions and take years to do. And the buses are are already serving the entire country. Uh, in, in, in and they've been cutting bus lines because the city's broke. So, you know, again, there's a it's layer after layer. And Detroit's not the first big city that's going to go broke. So, you know, again, there's less than within Detroit in so many levels. In the back. Oh, in the way in the back, sir. This is a point of context. The building in the, in the final scene there, this is the same building that Michael Moore went into to confront Roger Smith and Roger. Train station. Is that the GM? Oh, no, that's the train station. At the very end, sir, the very end with the singer? Yeah. That's the Detroit Central Depot. It was closed in the 80s. The only place Michael Hathmore has not been in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Detroit has a huge youth population, the largest in the United States. Where does this all fit in? jobs to contribute? The question is about. Um, about the residents of Dearborn and Hamtramck, uh, the Muslim population which is very large. Um, well, it's funny, Heidi and I are making another song about the Muslim population in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> we are. <laughs> so funny. And it's, um, there's, they are having the same problems as the rest of the citizens are. I mean, there's new immigrants that are coming that are not finding good paying jobs. And there are established families that have been here for two or three generations that are comfortable <laughs> on, in the middle class and Dearborn. So they're across the board as well. They, they're not, they're getting here as well. And, and Dearborn is, is a suburb of Detroit, and that is where the majority of the Muslim population um, lives. I mean, immigrants have done well in Detroit. Uh, there is an area called Mexican Town, uh, which is the Mexican neighborhood. Um, obviously. It's more like Mexican blocks. Though. Yeah, it's more like a couple of blocks. And, you know, they've, they've come and, and actually over the years done done well. They started most of the, many of the businesses and there's a there's one functioning grocery store in Detroit. 
uh, and it's in, in the Mexican neighborhood. Um, and so there's and some businesses up there. They've also suffered though over the last, and also, you know, um, with the immigration policies, that flow has stopped of people coming over the last few years. Um, and so it's interesting, you know, um, Michael Bloomberg um, thinks he can solve Detroit's problems by saying, you can let all new immigrants come to the United States as long as they'll move to Detroit. And this is his idea. Um, so it probably won't happen, but it's an interesting concept that immigration and immigrants and an immigrant spirit can help bring back cities like Detroit. Um, I think it's not it's not a harebrained idea, uh, and you've seen some of the immigrant populations do a little bit better over the years than the rest of the city. Um, I also want to say that it was extraordinary, and I loved it every second. <laughs> Thank um, you. I, she loved every second. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> things that you raised is actually this thing with the young artists that are relocating to Detroit. So I wanted to ask a few questions about that. First of all, whether there is actually an emerging scene of young artists mm -hmm. that relocate to Detroit now. Mm -hmm. Second, whether you think that's actually a hopeful thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and three, I mean, the moment where he said, where the young artist said um, that we can experiment here, it seems to me to be very, that's a very um, strong statement. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how the interaction is with born and raised locals mm -hmm. around that issue? Right. The question was about the artists. Um, the first question was, is there a, a real emerging art scene? The answer to that is yes. It's small, but it's steadily growing. And, um, you know, it, it's interesting. It brings up all kinds of questions about gentrification and how much is a good thing and <coughs> what does it do to the people that have been there for 70 years? And um, I mean, these are these are fabulous questions. These are I, I don't know the answer to them. If they're if it's a good thing, it's a bad thing. I think it's probably a good thing. It cannot hurt Detroit, that's for sure. Um, but it's it's fascinating, and it's happening to cities. It has happened to cities all over the country. So again, Detroit being an example, just on a huge scale. Uh, what was the last question? About the how the locals feel about it. Uh, how about the locals feel about it. I think I think the locals feel um, a little threatened. I mean, I just like I I've been. I, I think it's 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 a typical feeling. It's not it's not unique to Detroit. I think when gentrification happens, it's very it's uncomfortable for the people that live there. It makes them feel threatened in their space and their environment threatened a little bit. And you know what's interesting about the artists is again there's like a wider trend happening here. These are college educated kids in their 20s who can't get jobs and would have never moved to Detroit necessarily. And they're coming looking for opportunity, looking for an identity, looking for a place that they can make a difference. And there's a spirit among those kids that come to Detroit that's like, we don't know what we're doing here but we're on the brink of something important. This place needs us. And they're right. And, and, and there, there's, a, there's an optimism there. Uh, I don't think they figured out what exactly they're going to do. And some kids move to Detroit so they don't have to work because it's so cheap. That's another, you know. But I think uh, the kids who are moving to Detroit kind of represent that sort of like Occupy um, ethos happening in the country of like, wait, I thought I'd get a job easily and right. I have a $100,000 education and what happened, you know. So I think that the, the kids coming are also sort of in search of opportunity themselves. Back there. Two more. Two more. Do you have an opinion on this consolidation? I, I, I wasn't quite clear from the movie. Like, do you, do you two right. think it's a good idea, or do you think it's unfair, or it's right. uprooting people, or or it has to be done? I mean, do you have sort of a final opinion on it? Or? The question is about consolidation and what we what our opinion is on it. I think it's a very interesting idea. I think that uh, I think that it's I I think it would be terrifying for the people that live there. Um, I don't see a lot of options for the government of Detroit. I mean, they are completely and totally broke. So um, if, it, if, it's, if they're going to be able to implement this plan is the real question, though, because people own that property. People own this land. So they have, to, they have a lot of work to do. It's going to be really, really, really hard to do it. I think, it's, um, I think, it, there's no, I think it has to happen. Um, I think it has to happen. It's too, too that ship has sailed. Um, I wouldn't want to be the dude trying to do that. I mean, <laughs> but you know what's interesting is that Bing, Mayor Bing has been unable to do it um, for a million reasons. Eminent Domain has come to Detroit in the 80s and didn't, wasn't such a hit. So you, that can't, this is the thing. Um, if the city gets taken over by um, either the state of Michigan or the federal government, 
um, all, uh, they can do whatever they want. So they could break all union contracts, get rid of collective bargaining, fire every city Collect official. official. It's amazing the powers uh, that the emergency financial manager actually has. Basically, democracy would be over. The Pretty much, it would be sort of martial law, you know, economic style. So um, they, they could make it happen if, this, if the governor takes over the city. Not that he really wants it, but he might take it over. Um, they could actually force the relocation. That could get real ugly. I don't, I'm not in favor of that. So I'm really hoping that Detroit, uh, you know, can stave off the financial manager, which I think they might be able to, and, and, and quickly make their own plans. Um, because I, I think it could get really, uh, really unpleasant if this is done by outside forces. One more question. Yeah. I love the dichotomy between the front porch scene when people smoke cigarettes, being overweight, um, we're not going to be able to have any farms here, but it brings up a really good point. And I thought it was a really important piece that you guys did there. Because that's a hard thing for people to wrap their heads around. And they're locals, and they live there. It's like, you know, local here in Washington, the Jones House in the LA. You see it from a totally different perspective. Mm -hmm. And you did that in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. And you did it really well. So thank you for telling it this story. And they really well done. Thanks. Thank you for coming. Thanks and for coming. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much.